baie mense het een misconceptie van een plaatswerker. Een plaatswerker is soos enige ander werker, iemand wat een edele werk doen. As plaatsbestuurder uh, leed my na nie had in die wijnbedrijf, was my altijd maar uh, iets om na uit te sien. Op laatskool het ek altijd ingegaan oesteie, dat en ek gaan ja, op die uitie toe verdien ek nog 20 cent uh, middag. <laughs> maar het was goed vir my geweest, want so het ek geleer ken wat is die vrucht drijf soos ons het maar nou ken. Ek denk dat het my al baie geleer uh, wat rondom een plaas aangaan. We as Bonneweyer Wines have provided every single course that is available in terms of actual wine farm management. So they together with uh, our uh, viticulturists attend all the information days that are provided by organizations like WinPro and also wine tech and external uh, vineyard consultants. Next year, the beneficiaries of Bonneville Workers Empowerment Trust will be farming their farm on their own. We're confident that they're ready for that step. It's a huge run forward and that together with planting an additional 15 hectares of vineyard takes the whole project just to an absolute different level. Ethical trade essentially started within the wine industry simply because the wine industry in the late 1990s volunteered to be part of a project. And it really is about the consumer really being concerned about the products that they're buying, consumers being concerned about the fact that those products are made under ethical conditions, that workers are treated fairly, that workers are treated with respect. This adversarial nature that seems to be existing within the industry makes it very difficult for the industry to go out there to anyone and say we are making progress. Because what I then do as a trade unionist, I want to have the pull down syndrome. I'll always look at those things that are negative because it don't give me the space to sit down with you and engage in those issues. They're not going to always agree. It's labor vis-a-vis -vis business. People with two different um, interests but they've got the same concerns. And I think ethical trade plays a very important role at workplace level to transform how people interact with one another, how respect and dignity is being stored to workers. I think what we've identified is the fact that a lot of the producers and a lot of the farmers want to assist their communities, but their expertise is in making wine, their expertise is in farming. It's not necessarily in social challenges and in, in community development. As you think about it, it's like a friend that you know you can trust. En ik denk dat is wat hier gebeurt. Die mensen met wie alle hier die vernootschap aangegaan het, is, is generaties op die plaats, is families. Ik is hier geboren op die plaats, Teufelen, waar mijn voorouders uh, ook gewerkt het. Ons is een familie, ons is alle jaren, voor 1994. Het is al klaar, die mensen bemachtig. En uh, meneer Janie, senior boosman, was ik mijn mentor. Ik ben aangemoedigd uh, wat ik vandaag is en wat ik is. Als ik mezelf kan vat waar ik vandaan gekomen het, is een algemene werker. En hoe ik bemachtig is, hoe mijn leven verander het. In 2009 het ik die plaatswerker van die jaar competitie gewen en die het voor mij opgegaan. En als ik kijk op die plaats zelf, met die veetrijd, met die soort bemachtiging, mensen zijn levensomstandigheden het verbeter. Toen was die veetrijd in 2009, toe raak dinge net beter, want ons kon ons eie weine uitvoer naar die buitenland was, ons kon kry vir sociale opheving. En ons kon vandag sien wat het bereik het en hoe ons is as mense gegroei het. Ek het baie geaspireer en ek wou graag uitbrei en ek het geweet dat dit gaan een probleem is. Ek kan nie op my ei uitbrei nie. Ek het iemand nodig om my te help en wie gaan jou beter help as jou, as jou werksmense self. En ek het die gevoel gehad, ek moet hulle kry, dat hulle nie vir my en my familie werk, maar ons moet hier nou allemaal vir ons self werk. Toen ons ook begin en sê, maar wel, nou moet deersichtigheid wees, ons moet een stelsel hebben wat allemaal weet wat aangaan en dan moet communicatie wees en En ik denk dat het op het einde geloop met eigenlijk die stichting op het einde van die werkers trust. De behuising is een van die kwelpunten op ons plaatsen. Maar niet net in, 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 in Boland, maar in die hele weeskap. En dit is waar ons bemachtig is, want ons mensen kan voordeel trekken het behuising. Voor die mensen betekent het bij op die plaatsen. Ons plaatsmens het nog nooit die voren gehad om in zulke woonstellen te gewoon het nie. Essentially, what they do when they join WETA is they commit to adopting an ethical code. So they commit to actually implementing uh, the requirements of that code in their business, on their farms, in their cellars. 
The important thing around the audit is that it allows us then the opportunity to use the audit as a diagnostic tool to go and monitor to which extent they are in fact adopting the code and to which extent they are implementing the requirements. You know, each of the farmers that uh, farm with wine grapes here are members of INPRO. There's about 4,000 members. So, you're finding the organisations and the farms and the wineries are all coming together under one umbrella to drive a common purpose. We've seen substantial change in housing. There are no housing laws as such or municipal regulations that govern farm worker housing, but we believe that's a space in which we are seeing improvements happening where they didn't happen previously. I get to go to the and I'm very excited. I can't wait to get to the municipality and get to the municipality. I just want to be happy. I'm very excited and thankful for what they give us, because I can't afford my house. We have 2004 in Bosman and Dama, so I'm still in school. I'm going to try to get a chance to do it for a beer, and to qualify for it. And then my pa and I and Fra by the place, or for a beer, and I have to come and come and say to sell it for me, and I have to buy a beer. And all that I have to do is not my practice come to do it for a place, and I'm not going to get a friend. The trust stipulates that if you leave the services of Bonnebo Winery, you are also no longer a beneficiary of the trust. The simple reason for that is that uh, if, we, if we left everybody on the trust that leaves the farm, eventually you have 200 uh, beneficiaries to share a little bit of money, then there's really no benefit. So families have a mechanism in their hands to keep their future generations into this trust to share in the future. We're trying to make the wine industry an employer of choice and in order to do that you need to create opportunities and you need to make sure that you support people in everything, in all aspects of their lives. And the social side for us is just very important to make sure that we retain people, um, especially talented people, in our wine industry. Well I was at first very intimidated by this field, it was something that I was not used to and wine in our community was something that was um, frowned upon in certain areas, um, it was something that was totally misunderstood. And so for me, just coming from that background and enrolling at Stanley Marsh University, I just saw in myself how much I've changed. I'm starting out with the Cape Winemakers Guild in my third year already when they offered me the bursary. I've just grown and blossomed into someone that actually could be an ambassador for the wine industry in South Africa. Traditionally, wine is not a black consumer product um, and so when you think about consumerism and then you move on to actually owning a wine business, um, it's even more um, difficult to, to sell to an individual, to get them to come and invest in an industry that they know very little about. But I think the big thing for us is trying to build a spirit of entrepreneurship. We need people who are going to employ people. So it's all good and well that you qualify and that you work at a company, but what we actually need are people who, who are going to create jobs. And that's what the businesses, whether they're black owned wine brands or the farming businesses are going to do very well. There are a lot of programs and initiatives currently in South Africa. One, for instance, is the Vintpro WISE, which stands for Wine Industry Strategic Exercise. And what that basically is, it's a roadmap with certain strategic goals. And I mean, if all producers and big role players in the industry just um, align themselves with those strategic goals, the process would just go that much faster and by the end of the day we will be where we want to be. Keeping track of all the training um, at the moment is definitely a challenge. Um, the wine industry is doing a lot and just geographically massive um, in terms of numbers of employment up to 275,000 people employed um, at any given time, especially around harvest. So what we've done is we've created a learner management system that's going to capture all of the training that's happening in the South African wine industry. It's a first for us and I think for um, an agri-sector in South Africa. We're very excited about it. If you are an individual who has been trained, whether it's vineyard worker training or safety, health and safety on a bottling line in the wine industry, that training will be captured onto a system under your ID number and you'll be able to use that as an electronic CV for anyone who wants to see that you are actually an employable, trainable individual. And I think that's going to help us really map everything that's happening in terms of training in the South African wine industry and also help us to identify gaps. You know, it's not perfect um, and we understand that. 
but we can use technology to try and help us map that and also just share with the world, share our learnings, share with the other agri-sectors as well. Areas around uh, health and safety have improved. Many of the workers would have reported that it was the first time that they actually had training in health and safety. We've also seen, um, particularly when it comes to the formalisation of contracts for workers and for seasonal workers, that a lot more has been done in that area where previously workers had no contracts. They now, they now have contracts, they understand their working conditions, uh, their hours of work, all of that is made far more clear and it allows workers to be able to negotiate um, around those conditions of work. We've seen farm workers that have moved from the vineyard, they've actually moved into the cellar um, and taken on technical skills and there's quite a lot of um, work that's been done at the moment around skills development within the wine industry and the whole colour of wine starting to change and becoming dynamic and becoming very diverse in its nature and that's what's really exciting about the opportunities that are there for young people to actually take up in wine. I have worked as a kelder assistant, where I have done everything. I have made kelder schoon, tank schoon, and the tank is a club. In the year 2000, I have been in South Africa for the word in Tokyo, where our ambassadors were. And in 2002, I did my first school course. And in 2005, 2006, I had a beer by the stel. And I had to go to Elsenburg, where I had a beer and a beer and a beer. Wine Training South Africa is a, a non-profit organisation with the goal to empower people through knowledge. During 2016, we did research on the academic level of our learners and it was interesting to see that more than 60% of our uh, learners who enter the, the first level of the training um, are matriculated. So there's a big, big difference from 15 years ago. The, the, the onus is upon the farm owner to actually engage or take the farm workers to those platforms and, and get them there. And I think what's important is for them to note that this adds value to them as a, as a farm owner because if you have a much more skilled farm worker, the value that they add to your overall product is important. The uh, winery provides a financial mentorship. It provides a vineyard practice mentorship. And it also provides corporate governance mentorship to uh, the trustees at regular trust meetings. A vineyard you plant first three, four years, there's no production. Five, six, seven years you start covering your costs and in year from year 9, 10, 11, that's when there's a bit of net profit coming out of a vineyard in any normal circumstances. Today I'm very happy to say that we are already paying dividends, financial dividends, to the uh, beneficiaries of the trust. So if you look at um, land ownership, you know, to buy land um, in the traditional wine growing areas is quite expensive, so that becomes a barrier to entry. So what you'll find is there's quite a bit of participation higher up the value chain where people are buying brands and building their label from that end and then coming in to buy property. The harvest that's coming from this farm has grown so significantly that there's going to be a meaningful payout for these uh, beneficiaries soon. They stay on the farm, so they're automatically quite um, isolated from a lot of the urban um, opportunities. Because they are isolated, we wanted to then provide opportunities to actually bring these services, much needed services, to them. Once they started to work on these computers, they then became aware of what's happening outside. Through the internet, they could make contact with students abroad, and they could link up with educational institutions abroad. So making it mobile, we're able to actually then go to each and every farm at least once weekly, um, and they are able to then get those kind of necessary programs in computer literacy. And it's not just for the child, it's now for the parents as well. Because we're encouraging um, active parenthood. We're encouraging parents who take an initiative and take an active interest in their children's lives. We at Papers Project are trying to curb the rising rate of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. We get pregnant mamas, we buzz them in, they get trained and they get educated about the health, about social well-being, about their, their personal well-being. They get trained about the, the effects that alcohol and smoking has on their unborn baby and 
During this training session, the mama have to pledge that they're not going to drink anything during the pregnancy. When the near term, they receive a box, a baby box full of baby stuff that they can use for the first three months um, after the baby is born. And I think that is what our holistic approach is all about. It's about being there through, through the entire life of a child and therefore throughout the entire life of that specific adult as well. We advocate um, healthy wellness for the farm worker. So we'll screen the farm worker for diabetes, for cholesterol, for hypertension, for high blood pressure, for TB, for HIV. We do cervical smears for the, for the women and then we refer the patients if they are needed. We also um, look after our children. We do um, growth development and we do a weight monitoring and we do do worming and as well as vitamin A. We've come to collectively take responsibility and collectively bring the other guys in and say we have to move forward we have to get this thing right as a unit as an industry because at the end of the day it they won't say it is from my ex they'll say it's the South African wine industry I'm coming from a background where I got mentored and now I have the opportunity to mentor someone else I just wanted to show people out there that you shouldn't look at your surroundings but actually do something about it everybody's got a hunger to want to be better yeah? Everybody wants to strive to improve their lives. And I think often the question for young people is, how, how, how do I like, latch onto that opportunity? How do I even know about the opportunities? The people who've been able to share their love for farming with the people who work with them and for them are definitely reaping the rewards today. We should sell ourselves for what we are worth. Um, and, and I think we undersell ourselves as South Africans. We undersell our wine. And if you look in terms of apples for apples, in terms of quality, we beat some of the big giants of the wine world. We need to develop that. We need to have South Africans proud of South African wines, but obviously we have to make sure that all the other boxes that need to be ticked are ticked. Belangrijk is iets as jy die liefde vir die graan begin te kweek het, dan volg jy aan een goed net automatisch. So, jy moet gelukkig wees om in die winger te werk, jy moet om gaan vertroetel. In no way will I sit here and say everything is rosy within the industry itself. But if you're going to demand all this to be placed on this bottle that you're going to enjoy and drink as a consumer, are you prepared to pay a higher price, you know, in order to ensure that the very worker that you want to see his or her life being enhanced at least benefits, you know, for your, from your enjoyment of the product that they have. I, I think it's a matter of people just saying, what role can I play? Where can I add my two cents to make sure that this actually works? Because it's for the betterment of the industry. There's many guys out there that as farm producers, as farm owners, we have to just go to them and say, how do you get it right? How does it add value? The wine industry has the potential to be a benchmark on several different fronts. We've got fantastic wines, amazing terroirs, old soils. The product itself is amazing. The people who make the product are amazing. If we get this right, if we get it right making and creating amazing wines and creating an inclusive industry, I think that can be used as a benchmark for other emerging countries, even for the developing countries, to show that this is how you get around and this is how you create inclusivity in a sector where it didn't exist before.